Hey everybody, Shane here, Shoebox Legends. Thanks for stopping by the channel today for something a little bit different. Just gonna go through this random stack of cards sitting on my desk. Uh, this is a type of video that I've done before when I need to tidy up here at my uh, home office slash hobby headquarters. And uh, in this case, we're just gonna leave the stack sitting here and just kind of go through it top to bottom on camera. I know some of what's in here, there's some recent pickups um, off of both eBay and Com C, a gift from a family member, uh, probably some other stuff mixed in as well. So we'll start with the gift. Uh, for Christmas, my dad was kind enough to get me a box of Red Sox cards. And it's basically these, you know, team set bags, just like this one, which I haven't dug into yet, that have maybe 20 to 25 cards, you know, per bag. And they're all Boston Red Sox cards. And there were probably 30 or so of these team set bags in the box that I got. So I've been going through them slowly. You know, I'll get a 10 minutes between meetings or over a cup of coffee in the morning and I'll just rip one or two of them open. And I found some pretty cool stuff in them so far, like a couple of Jim Rice cards there, the 87 All-Star and the 89 Top Space. Love that photograph. Oil Can Boyd, who I talked about recently, related to his uncle Bob Boyd. How about the eyebrows on that Bill Buckner? How awesome is that? I love 87 Donruss. Big fan of that set. There's another Oil Can Boyd. Donruss Grand Slammers Mike Greenwell. This one I thought was cool. Changing the guard in Boston. Greenwell, Burks, and Benzinger. That trio never really uh, brought the success to Boston that this card portrayed. Dennis Boyd again on the 90 score set along with Hall of Famer Lee Smith. Another Lee Smith there. This is a cool, I think it's like an SP or something out of Collector's Choice. Cool Mike Greenwell. I love uh, the green monster in the background there. Prominently featured. Rest in peace, Tim Wakefield. Kind of sad story there, but an awesome knuckleballer for so many years for the franchise. One more 87 Donruss. Love that set with Tom Seaver. And then we'll close out with a, a Jim Rice. So some cool stuff. Nothing that's going to uh, finance my retirement or anything, although very few cards will in this day and age. But this has been a fun trip. Uh, down memory lane, just ripping these open and remembering some of these players uh, that I've seen both on TV and in person uh, over the decades. So uh, shout out to my dad for that cool gift. Uh, next up, a couple of cards that I salvaged from the basement, my own basement here. I was going through a trade slash giveaway box, putting together a package uh, recently for a YouTube member and uh, found this card out of Archives 2000, the closest I have to the 52 Tops Jackie Robinson, a card I'd love to own someday, but uh, don't really foresee in my immediate future. So I uh, wanted to salvage that one from the trade box and add that to my collection proper. And same with this one. I think this is maybe from one of those like high grade sets or something from the 1980s. Somebody can clarify, I'm sure, uh, these all time great box sets. The Jackie on this nice orange. Uh, this one does have a little bit of uh, like a white spot on the border, but uh, for now I'm going to use this in an upcoming video that I have as a uh, background material. A couple cool Jackies there, and then I also salvaged this from the giveaway box. It's, it's just a base card, but I really love the uh, 2008 Tops design with that bubble team name across the top, or kind of marquee or team name there. Um, just a really cool design, and I dig this Ichiro card. Uh, somebody who I wish I had more of in my collection, but uh, I'm going to salvage this one anyway. So a cool card there. It's always fun when you can dig through some of your own boxes and uh, find some hidden surprises that you forgot you had. Uh, here's a cool one that you can tell I got from Com C based on the label here. This is an Allen & Ginter buyback and it features uh, Vladimir Ballantine, who is uh, the NPB Nippon Professional Baseball single season home run leader. He broke the record uh, previously held by the great Sadaharu O. Oh, um, and uh, I just thought this was a cool card based on that. From his time in the United States with the Mariners. This was a 2009 Allen and Ginter card, as you can see initially, uh, but it was bought back by Topps and issued as part of the 10th anniversary Allen and Ginter buyback program, which was done in the year 2015. So cool card there. This was like a dollar on Com C, and I just like that, uh, that home run story. Um, all right, next up, we got a buyback here, another buyback, but on the hockey front, it is Hall of Famer Bernie Nichols. And this one has the uh, Certificate of Authenticity along with it. I've talked about these before, but this is the first ever Upper Deck Hockey release done in 1990. And 20 years later, they did these uh, Silver Stamp 20th Anniversary buyback versions of that inaugural Upper Deck Hockey set. So cool card there of Hall of Famer Nichols. 
This was cheap, like I think around $3. And uh, these are not easy to come by. And uh, as a buyback fan, like I am, uh, they're pretty essential for the hockey collection. So happy to have another one. Uh, I have a couple of really nice hockey buybacks that I haven't shown uh, on the channel that I'll have to get to soon. And then uh, this next one I recognize, this was an eBay pickup and it was an opportunity where I took advantage of combined shipping. So the card that I was after was this 2018 Topps Finest Mookie Betts, the blue refractor number to 150. Uh, love Mookie Betts. Uh, he's probably the guy that I player collect more than any other current baseball player. I've uh, been a fan of his for about 10 years now since he broke in with the Red Sox. And I really like his 2018 cards, which is the year that this card is from in particular because it was probably his career season, although we'll see what he does here in 2024. Uh, but just a cool numbered refractor. I love the blue being kind of a, a color match for the Red Sox along with red. And I was able to get this for, I think, around $3, which is kind of crazy to me, uh, given what he's doing in the game of baseball and the career that he's assembling here. And then since I had won that, uh, this seller offered 50 cents additional shipping on any other item that you won. So I looked through the other auctions they had ending the same night, and I found two cool cards for my football Z Folio, my tiny little football collection that I have going. Got the Jerome Bettis, the bus, and John Elway out of these uh, EX2000 release for football. And I have a few different copies of these cards on the baseball front. I've got a graded Ken Griffey Jr. Um, and a lot of people talk about these and rightfully so. They are like the most perfectly 1990s sports card because they've got acetate, they've got rainbow foil, uh, they've got shine, you know, and these are just plain base cards. So it was cool to see these two available. I was the only bidder on each of these at 99 cents. Uh, may have overpaid. Uh, these may be the kind of card you could find in a quarter box. I don't really know. Uh, I'm not a football collector, but I do have a small football Z folio, and I will happily take up two more slots uh, in that Z with these two cards for a buck a piece. Don't see too much football on the channel, so that's kind of cool. Uh, grab this one OV. I think I was also the lone bidder on this at 99 cents. Um, not even entirely sure what this is. It looks like it comes out of Series 2 Hockey. It just came out recently, and PCs is the insert. Um, obviously, just picked this up because of the immense amount of shine uh, and the fact that it was, you know, really dirt cheap. This was basically a dollar box uh, that I was hunting online at this point because I was already paying for shipping uh, with this seller. Uh, this one I thought was great. I was also the only bidder on this. This is the 2016 Xander Bogarts, but you can see the foil retro tops logo and that means this is the vintage stock parallel if i take this out of the case it has it's not going to come across on video but the cardboard stock on the back of this is not glossy at all it's like a matte finish and they only produce 99 of these serial numbered and so uh, i know xander you know doesn't have a big hobby following at all um, so i kind of get it but i was surprised to be the only bidder on this and i uh, was happy to add a new xander card or that collection alongside the new Mookie Betts card that got me kind of working with this seller to begin with. And then this one I was really happy with. Um, there was another 2018 Mookie Betts available ending the same night. And this is from Topps High Tech Acetate release as well. And this green is serial numbered to 99. Now this is not a team color match and maybe not a card I would normally pursue quite honestly, but uh, the price was too good to pass up. I got this for a dollar and change and it's also that 2018 year, which really means a lot to me as far as Mookie Betts cards. And so I just couldn't pass up a 2018 Betts uh, from a set that I like numbered to under 100 uh, for what equated to like $2 shipped. So pretty cool Mookie there. Um, this one is awesome. Um, I think this was the most expensive card that I got with the seller. I want to say it was maybe around $10, but I love the 2011 Tops Parallels. And this is the Platinum Diamond Anniversary um, just a fantastic looking Ichiro card. I mentioned uh, earlier that I don't have as many Ichiro cards in the collection as I would like to. Uh, and I had actually already purchased this one when I stumbled across that Topps Chrome uh, in the basement that we looked at earlier in the video. And uh, really, really happy to get a copy of this. Just a stellar uh, horizontal photograph on this one as he makes contact. And this is not like a checklist or highlights card or anything. This is his actual base card. Uh, from 2011 tops. Look at all that red and italics. Uh, just crazy. So 
Really cool Ichiro there. That one may get the uh, one-touch magnetic treatment after today's video. I think that's a one-touch worthy card, and I love the foil work on that. Just a great, great card there. And then we're going to close out with just a small handful. It looks like five cards here. These were in the back of the cheese box right about here that you see in the background. And what was happening is the sun comes up every morning and shines into this window. And these cards standing in the back like this were kind of exposed to some of that sunlight and I didn't want them to fade. Uh, so I took them out of the cheese box. We're gonna look at them today and I kind of tilted what was left in there forward so that nothing is catching direct light. And so let's look at these four cards that I had to uh, excavate. We have Luka Modric on the inaugural Topps Chrome Sapphire design for the UEFA Champions League. Uh, these cards are like dirt cheap, or at least they were for a long time. Guessing they still are, but a really, really exciting player. Uh, enjoy his game, and I have for quite a long time now. I've been a fan of his for years. I have a little section uh, for him in my Soccer Z folio. It's a cool one there. And then it looks like Vintage Baseball. To close it out, check out this 55 Milt Bowling. Look at the yellow in the background of that card. That is just a killer example. You can see why I wanted to get this out of the cheese box and not subject it to any uh, sun damage or anything like that because this is a gorgeous copy of this card and gets me, uh, as I seem to always say when I show one of these, one card closer in my kind of half set pursuit, slow build set pursuit of the 55 top set. And another set that I'm doing that for, we're gonna close out with the final three cards from here is 1954 Bowman. And check out this Clem Labine, Rhode Island native. Uh, this one does have a crease in the cards, sort of like right through the sky and like his eyebrow line there. So I will probably try to find a nicer version of this. In fact, as I show it, I want to say I already maybe have a nicer version of this. So we'll see. Um, but this is one I would like to upgrade someday. But like I, I say every time I show, you know, early 50s cards like this from ComC, probably paid around a dollar for this, maybe less given the crease. And uh, there aren't too many things in the hobby that you can spend a buck on that are more rewarding than like a 1950s Brooklyn Dodgers card. So that one's cool to have regardless. And check out this one. I believe this is Dick Cole or Richard Pry Cole, a guy Cole. Doesn't really say on the back here, but Dick Cole, I was right about that for the Pirates. Looks like he maybe has a mouthful of chaw here. Not sure. And uh, I would love if somebody can confirm or deny this. I'm thinking this might be the polo grounds in the background, but I'm still learning when it comes to old school uh, background stadium identification, but another nice one there. And I've got a box, a little wooden box where I'm keeping my slow build 1954 Bowman set. And all three of these will end up in that box, including this, uh, the final card for today's episode, Harry Prakowski. Great uh, smile there and just a classic pose. This one you can tell like, it's got some wear on the upper side. It's got worn corners. This is not a perfectly mint card by any means, but it's a nice enough looking card for my uh, cheap set build. So this is kind of what I try to find. As long as the, the majority of the card has good color, good res registration, excuse me, and is not you know full of holes and wrinkles and creases, then um, that's kind of what I'm going for. So there's the third and final 54 Bowman and the final card in today's kind of little mini pile rummage. Hope you saw something that you liked here early in the baseball season. It was mostly baseball content here in this one. Uh, I'm going to get to filing all of these away, but I'll be back very soon with some more content, as you know. And until then, I hope you all enjoy the hobby. Take care.